Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy Novak with the Agile Government Leadership Steering Committee. Um, thank you for joining us today at this special time as we host the New South Wales Transport Management Center on another very lively discussion about Agile development. Um, Robert Reed, he's a former Presidential Innovation Officer and previously worked with ATNF. He's one of my colleagues on the steering committee for AGL, and he's going to um, help with the interview of Chris. Robert? Uh, well, thank you very much, and it's um, very nice to uh, be having our first international show and be uh, speaking to the other side of the world, which may produce some audio problems. Um, but we're very interested to learn about how things are being done in Australia. And in particular, here we have Chris, Chris Ruolt, the manager of the systems used by the operations of the Transport Management Center for New South Wales. Um, that is a very operational arm, although Chris is more the IT person for the operational arm. And we may get to hear today how Agile interplays with that. Uh, so, Chris, I'm going to hand it over to you, and if I've misintroduced you in some way, perhaps you'll correct me. Good job. Yes, the Transport Management Centre uh, uh, manages the transport network in the state of New South Wales. We're, it's got a staff of about 180, about half of which work down in the control room on the shift work and then the, the back end staff. So I've got a team that, uh, uh, that the control room use to manage incidents, to, to communicate to the public to communicate with the emergency services and to communicate with all our staff in the field. So, um, we've been using Agile for about four years now. Uh, we started to use Agile because we had so many failures with the waterfall system approach. It just wasn't given. So, uh, we made the uh, decision to move across to Waterfall and uh, it was up until that stage all our Waterfall projects had been outsourced and sort of the hands off we supply the we, you know, we supply the requirements and eventually we, we get back a system but with with Agile there's that much more interactive uh, quicker response that we need and it's uh, it's been a, a journey to get to where we we are, but it's it's really working well now. Thank you, Chris. Um, so uh, it, it it's very interesting to us. It sounds like you're the IT manager of a bunch of emergency systems that, in some ways, people's lives and certainly people's ability to get to work uh, depend on, and that's a, a somewhat unusual. Um, and heavy responsibility. So we're very interested um, in that. And of course, your story is not that different than many government um, agencies and, and places that have been attempting to have a higher success ratio than waterfall. Um, you mentioned uh, requirements, and in, at least in the US federal government, in the past, there's been a tendency to write very lengthy requirements documents which don't change very much, which is uh, sort of the opposite of the way Agile is being done. Um, can you perhaps uh, comment on the way you're handling requirements now and the particular Agile methodologies uh, you use? So over to you, Chris. Thanks, Robert. Uh, well, we're using the Scrum methodology, uh, but the, because the TMC is a highly complex little organisation. We do a lot of work on upfront on our architecture, and and uh, uh, we fall up until the time the agile team takes over. But uh, um, yeah, we We use the Agile technology, we, we do uh, sprint planning workshops, we use sprint reviews, uh, we have a scrum board, um, and uh, we, 
we would like to have the, a rep from the user team full time with our team, but, but that, they just can't afford that. So we do have to spend, uh, devote more effort during the elaboration sessions on requirements analysis. Um, but yes, with Waterfall we used to spend so much time doing requirements and in the end the requirements were never complete. So there was just as much risk going, starting the development as, uh, using Waterfall as there is with Agile. You know, so it's a matter of risk management and being able to empower the development team to work directly with the, the uh, product that the user wants in a, in a, in a much quicker manner, much quicker time frame. So Chris, if I could take you back to the beginning, in the case study that we developed for you that will be published out on the AGL site um, over the next couple days, you said that it was the core Agile messaging that really resonated with the team. Can you expand on that a little bit more? Um, exactly what was it that resonated and then, and then how did you actually get started with Agile? Ah, yes. Um, yeah, we, well, we got started with that job because everything else was failing and uh, we had to try something new. Um, it's the, yeah, the, I mean, the very concept of agile, being agile, being able to give the user what they want in a much quicker time frame was something that we desperately needed because uh, for the last few years, uh, and I don't think the TMC is very different to many other organisations, there's such a high rate of change, you just can't afford to wait, you know, 12 or 24 months to produce some sort of business benefit. So the promise of Agile was to give that business benefit a lot quicker. And our early projects had to do uh, more with moving off legacy systems. So it was quite, it was still quite a while before there was a business benefit, because before you could turn off the legacy I remember one legacy system of the news, but I believe they looked at you and looked at the, the what, what was being demonstrated and said, but that's just a mock-up. And the teams took great pride in being able to say, no, that is the actual system. And since the since those legacy systems have been replaced and we're on the new platform, we can do these incremental changes and these bug fixes much quicker. It is just that, you know, the the users just love the Agile method because they do see the the responsiveness of the development team and giving them what they want. Okay. Go ahead and mute yourself, Chris. Um, thank you. Well, that's that's really brilliant. And one of the things that I'm um, wondering, it sounds like your users, which would probably be what we might call different business units within the government of Australia, are very happy with what you have done. I wonder if the average Australian has seen any benefits from what you've done. I assume most of them, of course, are unaware of um, getting better service, uh, but even if they're unaware of it, do you believe that the success that you've had has actually impacted people's lives? Uh, the the uh, legacy systems we replaced to date are directly um, related to uh, the emergency response. Um, they are those mission critical safety systems uh, that they are often in the room for us. There's an onboarding applications that we we've been doing um, uh, before we tackle the big one. Um, but at the moment, so uh, the the system that we went live with late last year was one where uh, if people need to close down the road network for road maintenance activities or for an event, uh, they have to apply to us and we have to give them a license. Uh, and um, 
that was a 10 day turnaround. Uh, and that made it very, very difficult for all these road contractors to plan their work. Now we've got that down to a two day turnaround. So for that group of people, it's been, it's been um, really positive for them. Uh, plus, uh, our very first one had to do with managing the faults on the electronic devices you see around on the road network. And uh, that system was just a, a three or four month project, but that has got huge benefits for the maintenance contractors. So, yeah, we're, we're not we're not quite there with the actual emergency services, but we've got we've now got such uh, good runs on the board. I'm sorry, that's a cricketing term. Oh well, maybe it's a baseball term too. That uh, that the, the users see the benefit of the approach, and we will be using that in the future. Okay, thank you, Chris. And we only have uh, six viewers right now, but uh, we always invite your questions. You can chat your questions to us, and we'll try to give them to uh, Chris if we think they're appropriate. And of course, that will make the show more interesting. Um, we have prepared some questions for Chris ahead of time, and so I'm going to go into those right now. Um, uh, Chris, we're going to get back to successes that you've had and challenges that you've had, but you mentioned that you use three-week sprints. Um, I'm wondering in particular uh, if you use uh, automated testing, continuous integration, and estimation and velocity computation in your particular Agile um, use of Agile. A lot of, a lot of uh, places grow into those techniques over time. Over to you, Chris. Uh, you're quite right, Robert. We are growing into those things. So we uh, 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 we, uh, we are working as we talk on doing automated testing. Um, uh, that is desperately required because uh, to do regression testing each time you roll out a, uh, uh, a major new piece of functionality is an absolute must. We have had some uh, very recent issues because we haven't been able to do that. We haven't been able to do the level of testing um, and that does cause us some, some stress. And to be able to do those integrated, you know, to, 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 to yeah, better integrate the requirements with the test plans with the automated testing is one thing that, that we're working on. Um, at the moment, uh, uh, the, the main reporting technique for, for the sprints is still Excel and we use uh, burn down rates, burn down charts uh, and that, that sort of thing. Um, yeah the business and say, is this the correct user story? And then from that user story, that um, uh, flows flows into the backlog of items. Now, that's still, we still haven't um, got completely on top of that because uh, when we when we do the initialization for the project, we, they, we we don't uncover all the complexity of many of the business processes that the users are telling us. So the user stories are still more at an epic level. Uh, so it's, as I said before, during elaboration, we're uncovering a lot of a lot of uh, additional sub processes that are that are that are happening in the business that weren't in the previous software uh, and that they want in the new software. And they keep on saying, but this is critical. And this is critical to to us, and well, what so much? This is a, a time limited project. Tell us what the priorities are, so that we can deliver the main business benefits that you need. And the users found that very difficult concept. They want everything, but um, they've they've now learned that they've got to prioritise. It's not up to the development team to prioritise. Um, you know, we've done the hard yards, we've done the business case for them, we've got the funds for them, now it's spending the funds in the, 
you know, in the manner that give, delivers the, the business benefit. And to that extent, we have just this week done a series of uh, short training courses for the senior users and the senior business on the Agile methodology to get them to understand this is the approach and this is their role in it and these are the decisions and the tools that we need to, that we use to make sure that the project is on track and delivering the best business benefit in the available time. Robert, well, if I can just uh, interject with a quick question for Chris. Um, Chris, during the case study, we talked about the first Agile project you had, which was the fault management system. And you were really emphasizing the importance of having the subject matter expert from the business side engaged. And in this case, it both ended up being a challenge plus a success. Can, do you mind expanding on that just so um, we get the importance across? Yes, that's right. Where, what, what happened was that the senior user uh, didn't uh, have the time to attend the to 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 uh, attend all the meetings, so he delegated it to one of his staff, and the staff person did the best they could. And after three months, uh, the system went live, and then the senior user saw it and said, "That's that's not what I want. It doesn't work the way I want it to work." So uh, we had to do another uh, sprint of work. But it was just one more sprint to change the system to, to do what the senior user wanted. And that just proved the agile process right then and there. It was, uh, yeah, it was a really good, I mean, we just didn't expect that when the, the system first went live, we'd get so much negative feedback from the senior user. But, the Agile method allowed us to to deal with it in a way that Waterfall didn't allow us to do. Well, that that's really um, valuable experience. Um, and let me just say from your previous uh, uh, statement that you're not the first person who has had uh, what we call product managers, people who are in the role of uh, representing the voice of the client or the customer who have a difficulty prioritizing and don't realize that by prioritizing they're going to make themselves much happier by getting what they need much faster and that Agile allows that to be accomplished whereas Waterfall normally um, doesn't. Uh, I was also intrigued when you were talking about uncovering complexity and things that had to be dealt with in the story writing process a lot of times for the teams that I work with that comes in in attempting to estimate things um, you your engineers normally realize when they're trying to estimate things how complex certain things are going to be um, so uh, that is a fairly common experience um, but y you've mentioned now several times the success that you've been able to bring to individual people by doing things rapidly and providing them what they want. Uh, it sounds like you would agree that those people that you've worked directly with, that you've delivered things to quickly, to the extent that they understand Agile, are now convinced that they uh, want to work that way. Um, I wonder if there's any hope of expanding that within the Australian government or expanding it to other departments or if it's the case that you've been able to convince the people that are sort of your peers that you work with and deliver things to but um, perhaps the executive leadership um, doesn't support Agile that much or perhaps they do I have I really have no idea but I'd love to hear your comments about it I, uh, yes, yeah, since we started using Agile, there, um, uh, the use of Agile in, in government is increasing. I just think that's, you know, that's the trend. There are now two, two other major projects within our uh, Department of Transport um, using the Agile methodology. Uh, and uh, there is a fairly active agile community in in New South Wales. Um, 
Yeah, so so it is it is definitely growing because this because waterfall is just uh, is failing to deliver and 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 it just takes too long. Water, waterfall still has its place for when we're buying in uh, big commercial off the shelf you know products, which we we still do. But but um, for all the other things, you know, agile is certainly the way to go, and and there is certainly. A, uh, a lot of movement over towards Agile in, in the New South Wales government. Well, thank you very much. Um, we have a related question from the audience. Uh, thank you very much. I'll attempt to pronounce your name, Mark Hebert. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see this, Chris, with your technology, but he writes, thank you for sharing, Chris. Public sector innovation in Australia does a lot of great work. Are you collaborating with them or any other federal agency to scale Agile across the government? Did you get that, Chris? Got to learn to unmute. Uh, sorry. Uh, we, we have had a number of discussions with both other state and agencies about what we're doing and how we're doing it. The tools that we're using, uh, uh, the sort of development environment. So that it's it's not, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not so much around, um, you know, particular flavours of agile, but it's just that uh, the tools we're using now are all agile tools, and the fact that we can deliver means that we are getting a lot of interest. So you know, we've had the federal defence guys down here. We've had other um, New South Wales agencies come over to see what we're doing. So yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of interest. And Chris, I know a major challenge you've had in adopting Agile is the actual contracting of Agile development. So can you talk a little bit about how you tackle that? Yes, and I see from some of your previous uh, sessions that uh, you know th this is a this is a problem we have in common with. Uh, our U.S. counterparts that the 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 government contracting uh, system is set up to to purchase a product, and with Agile you're not so much purchasing a definitive product, and it is more about buying in services and capabilities, and the the contracting system just isn't set up to do that. So so. We work out well. That is, that has a very prescriptive uh, form of contract. But fortunately, within within our agency, there's a very good procurement group that overlook all procurement, and they've been working, uh, doing a lot of good work with us, trying to uh, set up the system so it deals with agile projects. So, so that's been, you know, we're. That that's been really good. That um, you know that the, and the the, the the procurement group within the transport agency then talks to the state procurement group about modifying the the, the overall contract process. So so we'll better enable agile projects. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kathy. Were you going to ask another question? Yes, um, another interesting aspect of the case study, um, Chris, and I'm going to ask you to speak a little bit about replacing the critical legacy system um, that had all the business processes and was the single point of failure um, and kind of the waterfall attempts and, and how Agile made that successful, if you could please. Yes. Well, uh, um, we have a very large legacy system uh, that was off the shelf, and we have built a number of small applications that are sort of satellite applications to that that feed off it. And in order to get off the legacy system, we've got to redevelop all those smaller systems uh, uh, to be, you know, so so that we can ease the transition in the future. And we're only sort of partway through this, and that is the big program for 
to gradually peel off the layers from the legacy system. So we get down to the core legacy system and we know from doing our market surveys that there's no uh, application out there that's everything that we need to do. So the the our future system is going to be a mix of COTS products plus bespoke products. And all those bespoke products will be built using the Agile methodology. Um, so that is uh, that is a big program and we've just got the business case through government to, to do that. So uh, we're, we're in the depths of planning in detail just our approach to doing that. So it's a really interesting time here and if we do it right, uh, it'll be major benefit to uh, to the, the road users and people in New South Wales and to the other emergency workers that we do, you know, that we work with. So it's a really interesting time for us. Robert, why don't you go ahead and take a couple more of the Q&A questions for Chris and then I'll follow up at the end with a benefit question. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, thank you very much, um, Ms. Angel Quixie. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly for sending in these questions. And they get to a rather interesting point. Um, Chris has spoken about how compelling and convincing it is when you demonstrate to people rapid turnaround on something that they really want in a um, in an agile setting. And my experience has been that almost always convinces anybody. Uh, any executive who's skeptic uh, immediately becomes a fan as soon as they start getting things on time instead of uh, six months late. But Ms. Quixie's first question uh, is about how you convince people to let you use Agile, I believe. Uh, and I don't think you've quite answered that, Chris. Uh, so I'm going to read it and let you answer here. Ms. Quixie writes, Thank you so much for joining us. I have a couple of questions around making the business case. One, how did you communicate the value slash make a business case for Agile in the beginning? Over to you, Chris. Uh, it's a good question. Um, it, it wasn't easy because the the corporate CIO that we had at the time didn't believe in Agile, didn't believe in these modern uh, tools for uh, developing systems that use business rules and business process. And it did take a lot of work to put that business case together. But ultimately, we, we based it on the fact that it can deliver these business benefits much quicker and that these waterfall projects had failed to deliver. The cost of failure is significant. Um, so we were able to show that uh, uh, the whole of life costs of a, a product under an agile system was less than that of a waterfall approach. So so that finally got, a, got the business case through. Now having, having said that, then there were a lot of people in the business who didn't believe in the Agile process and our uh, early senior users dragged me up in front of my our joint boss to because he didn't believe that Agile was the best approach that we should just leave to the corporate IT professionals to deliver the solution using waterfall. Uh, fortunately, you know, my boss had the, the faith that we would deliver and if it wasn't for him, you know, we wouldn't be where we are. Um, yeah, so it's 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 a matter of just it's like democracy. Democracy is the worst form of government, apart from all the rest. Agile is the worst form. I mean, there, it, there's just as much, just as many problems, but the the it's much better method than in than in a waterfall method. method. So, yeah, it, uh, and, and, and as Cathy said, the fault management system was the first one, was a success that, that put the runs on the board and, 
and let us move forward with the, doing further agile projects. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I would like to go on to Ms. Quixie's other um, uh, question, which relates, I, I think, to things you've talked about and how you demonstrate success to people. And it's really one of the keys to um, agile development. Um, as Mark Schwartz has said, he thinks of agile as uh, a, a mechanism for making the turnaround extremely rapid and that everything in Agile is based around the principle including the testing of, of being able to rapidly um, respond to decisions. Um, Ms. Quixie writes, one of the functions of Agile development is that it is continuous. Our organization is used to clear requirements, in quotes, clear deadlines and clear end dates. How have you and your organization dealt with the uncertainty of Agile? Over to you, Chris. And Chris, I'll just add, that really comes back to what you were talking about contracting as well. Very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so are time limited. And the use and has that when that time runs out, we've got to have a product that can, that can go into operation that will give the business benefit. So uh, it very much focuses the mind. Uh, it is, there, there were some people in my team who were risk averse almost, and which is why they liked the waterfall method. And, and uh, but, you know, so waterfall has a different risk profile, but the fact is that you, you know, you, it's agile risk management. You know, you're dealing with all these things as they come up. So we do, we do need to wrap our agile team, you know, under our project management methodology. So we have clear risk and issue escalations that things are dealt with in a in a quick time frame, so that the the agile team is not held up in delivering, you know. Uh, the product in the in the limited time that they they've got. Okay, well, thank you, and we welcome uh, more questions from our uh, audience. Uh, it seems like our audience has asked better questions than we were able to come up with. Uh, but um, Kathy, why don't I hand it over to you, and perhaps the audience will be thinking of some questions. Uh, while you ask uh, the other questions you had in line. Thanks, Robert. So, Chris, one of the things that I wanted to uh, I wanted you to focus on was um, the two primary results we discussed of Agile in TMC, and one was around the processes and finding the workflows, and the other was really about the increase in efficiency, including the use of paper. Um, so if you could expand on those, I would appreciate it. Yes, yeah, so that one about the use of paper is interesting. So this was the application that went live late uh, late last year. And the, the uh, when people wanted to close down the road network, they had to apply by fax, and they had to put in their work management plans, their traffic management plans, and all this was printed out, and we were the second highest user of paper in the New South Wales government sector. And just overnight, we just killed that off by the introduction of the new system, which enables everything that needs to be printed out. All the approval process is now electronic, and um, yeah, a great saving to, to the environment. Um, workflows is uh, is really interesting. So even though the TMC is certified to quality standards and we have a lot of uh, standard operating procedures and the like, it's still when you get down into these nuts and bolts of these uh, systems you, or, or these uh, business units, they find that they've, they've made many uh, decisions about how they handle or deal with particular problems that aren't documented. And it's only when we get into the elaboration sessions that we find out 
all these stuff work for us. So uh, it, it is really, yeah, and the TMC is very workflow business rules oriented. So we need, to, we certainly need to deal with that in a very agile method. And that's why we, you know, we'd be in an elaboration session and the user would say, ah, but it doesn't actually work that way, it works this way. So we had to put another BA on the Agile team to quickly work with the users to come up with a solution to give back to the Agile team. So they, it didn't hold them up. They were able to go on with the other items in their backlog, and in the meantime, we, we had worked through a solution on these, on these uh, newly discovered workflows. Thanks, Chris. I want to expand on the culture. So let me start by um, reading the quote that we have from you in the case study. And you gave some words of advice. You say, with Agile, you need to let go and not control. You need to learn to delegate and give people the room to try something and fail. As long as they are open, learn lessons, deliver a business benefit, and move on. So can you talk a little bit about how Agile has changed the culture of the people on your team and the business people? What kind of, a, what kind of changes have you seen or noticed? That's right, yeah. giving, giving the actual users uh, the power to develop, you know, to be involved in the development is something which Waterfall didn't allow for. And with our with our uh, agile development at the moment, everything is done on site. So there's a very close connection between the development team and the user groups in the TMC. So we've, we've cut out all that latency that we've had. Even with other development groups, there was not the level of communications that we needed uh, to successfully deliver. So having the team on site Having the development team on site and working closely with the user really empowers the user and empowers the development team to get on with doing what they do. And and it, as I was saying, you, you can't be risk adverse. And the to, the agile team has a level of momentum, and you just can't afford to stop that momentum. You just can't pause and while you make a decision. So and. The senior management doesn't have the time to get involved to make all these uh, decisions, and there's a lot of them during an agile team. It's decision, 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 and so you need a good senior user rep on the team. And you've just got to trust that user rep and trust the development team. And uh, uh, just to explain, so we we uh, under the contracting we're buying in a team. So this is team is coming from companies that have their own strong Agile methodology and experienced in Agile. And it would be great to see the uh, uh, level of interaction between the Agile team and the users. And the user will say, but I need to do this. And the Agile team will come back and say, yes, you can do it this way, this way, this way, or that way, <laughs> rather than just uh, uh, some executive making decision that there are options and the user can choose the option that they want. So it has been highly interactive and when you see it working, it is just a, you know, it's a great thing to see it working and it allowed, it's certainly allowed me to step back and say, I trust these people and I will, I will just go along to the sprint reviews when I can, but it's pretty rare that I have to come in and say, you know that that I have an issue with what they're doing. It's it's been really great that uh, being able to delegate them to make those decisions really does work. So it's just been okay. Well, um, Kathy, I have a few questions I'd like to finish up with, uh, but um, we have another question here. Um, which I would like to ask Chris. Um, the audience asks, was there any particular resource, blog, book, article, etc., you shared with your formerly Waterfall team to introduce them to Agile 
and get them all on the same page of how to do it. And I might amend that question by also asking, how long did that process take? Uh, and, and do you feel like you've fully accomplished it, or do you feel like you're still in the process of, um, of learning that? Over to you, Chris. Uh, certainly, it's still, we're still in the process of learning. Um, there's, yeah, it, it's, it's a journey, and um, uh, you know, it took it took quite a while to move our waterfall people across, and in, uh, you know, the you know we had to rebuild the team, so you know, to an agile team, you know. Uh, most of my team, you know, they are contractors, and if they're the sort of people who couldn't fit into the agile way, we didn't renew their contract. So there, there was there was a bit of a start turnover uh, in, in in that sense. But um, uh, I think that uh, nowadays uh, most of the people who are applying for our contract positions. You know, always see the benefits. They they hate waterfall just as much as we do because it's not delivering and it's it's so frustrating for them. But in the waterfall project, uh, you know, they are seeing the benefits of what they do. So that has been really positive. But it's certainly we we're still not. Um, yeah, I'd say you know on on a maturity scale, I'd say. Yeah, we're reasonably at maturity level three now, but to tackle these big projects in the future, we've got to go beyond three. So yes, it is a journey, and uh, and uh, yeah, agile is not a fixed lockdown system in itself. It is very agile, and all these new uh, techniques and tools, and we're talking about test automatic testing environments and that sort of thing. It just means that. Um, you know, you, you need to you need to be learning. You need to be you know, continually retraining your team, uh, looking for new ways, better ways of doing things that that uh, manage the risk and enable you to get that velocity out of the agile team that you that you need. But yeah, it's a it's a great journey though. Encourage everybody to go on it. So I'm sorry, Chris. I may actually have uh, distracted you with my amendment. So I'd like to return to the um, original statement of the question uh, to, and you may not be able to bring anything to mind right now but um, was there any particular resource a book or an article or a YouTube approach or something that you shared with your team to uh, get them rolling and get them started with Agile techniques? Oh, look, you're straining the memory now. There, there, there was a quite a lot of um, information. I think it was just the the really key thing was the uh, uh, the four agile principles. Um, but we did uh, we did uh, bring in a couple of uh, experienced agile people to talk to the team. About agile and the different flavors of agile, um, and there were uh, uh, there were some good books on agile that that, that that we did get. I just can't recall the name of them at the moment. Chris, uh, did you, did you speak to other groups that were agile? Other groups that were agile? Sorry, Kathy, I missed that. So, did you speak with other groups that were agile before you went down that journey? Oh yes, there were there were some um, there were some uh, other groups, and there were you know there was quite a number of uh, contracting companies who who you know were, were beginning to use agile, who were able to talk to. Um, but it, the real challenge though was that there was just no one else in the department using agile, and and whilst we got excited about it, you know, and we could see that that was the future, it, you know, the, the real challenge was convincing the senior management to go down that path. Um, yeah, that, that, 
that was a difficult journey uh, because the people that, that saw the benefits of Agile the most were the people, you know, below me, but the people above me just weren't used to that level of change and and that way of working. They uh, again, they they tend to be I'm to call them all control control you know for something did I buy it or did, did did I get it or didn't I get it and uh, yeah so that that was the real challenge so that that's very interesting I wonder um, you said you brought in some uh, coaches or some experts did you was that just like a lunch or did you actually have workshops and you know several days of of uh, training and perhaps you know what was the first sprint like uh, you know did you go through exercises or did you just start a three-week sprint and feel your way through it uh, we didn't do any formal training it was just uh, you know a, a couple of um, sort of two-hour workshops I guess where where the people came and talked to us about the benefits of using Agile. Um, the, the very first use of Agile was, and we talked about the fault management system, but prior to doing the actual Agile production of it, we, we did a proof of concept uh, working with one particular partner that Kathy's associated with. And process business rules uh, produced in, I think it was two, three week sprints. You know, a a, a system that we, you could almost productionize that was so good in that proof of concept. Um, and fortunately, the the costs involved in doing that proof of concept were within my delegated authority, and I didn't have to go higher to get that approval. But and the proof of concept was successful, so then we had to do the full business case for requiring the system, which took almost another 12 months. Um, but um, and and but once my team saw the success of the proof of concept, uh, that they were convinced this is the way to go, and um, then it was in in that um, delay while we're doing the business case and actually acquiring the new development platform, uh, the team, there was certainly a lot of uh, uh, learnings going on and we did start sending people to courses then. So by the time we got the new platform and the new system in place, we were ready to go. Well, thank you. Um, so, you know, Agile Gov leadership is attempting to promote the use of Agile in government um, because we think it's a good idea and in particular to connect people and give people a way to discuss these matters and we're very happy to be discussing that with Australia um, right now but I don't want this to be like a giant love fest in the sense that yes we promote agile but we're not selling agile nobody pays us to sell agile um, and we want to talk about the difficulties with it as well as the successes. Um, I wonder if you have had any failures with Agile that you'd be willing to discuss um, and they might be small uh, because one of one of the mottos of Agile is to f you know fail fast and fail often rather than fail big right uh, you know my boss has always told me they didn't mind me surprising them with small failures but they never wanted to have a big surprise where I told them something wasn't going to work. Uh, but uh, it's possible that our audiences would like to know in what ways Agile has not gone that smoothly for you. Um, and I don't mean trying to convince people, but where you simply didn't get done what you sought to get done. Thank you. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, we've, we've had our failures. Uh, yeah, there, there's uh, because we we you know haven't worked. Um, 
you know, that application about the, using the different agile tools. You know, when things go into production, um, well, in here at the TMC, the the production environment you can never replicate it in your test environment. And when things get moved off your your test environment into production, there have been some pretty big issues. Um, and you know, we've we're now learning that you know we've got a uh, uh, one of the scenes. The test. Oh, the main team comes in on a mob. It is, and some of these things have been, you know, like quite embarrassing, <laughs> you know. And and sometimes we've just seemingly overlooked some pretty obvious things. Chris, uh, so Chris, I do listen. Yeah. Chris, can I ask you to repeat about the last two minutes of what you were saying? Because I'm afraid our audio cut off on this side. Audio cut off. On this side. Could you just repeat what you oh, said? Oh, okay. Could you just repeat what you said? Hey, I'm saying, yeah, Agile is not risk-free, and we have certainly had some failures. So our uh, operational systems environment, we can't replicate that in the test environment completely. So when you move things across to to the operational environment, you come across a new range of faults and issues and bugs that. And, and some of them seem so obvious, you know, that it's quite embarrassing sometimes or in testing. But that's it. You've got to take it on the chin. You've got to learn from it and, you know, adjust the way you do things. And the fact that it's agile, we've got the, the people here, you know, we've got the development team on site so they can quickly get in and analyse what the issue is and put in a quick fix. Um, yeah, so, so, and some of these things, uh, you know, have uh, almost been uh, uh, critical flaws, you know, so, so they were quite embarrassing when they go in. So, yeah, Agile, agile you know, it, it is still, anything to do with software development is risky. The software development is really, you know, I regard as research and development. There is no guarantee that something will be successful and you know the the fact is that there are more um, the possibility of things going wrong is more atoms than there are in the universe and these things do go wrong and that's just how do you respond to them it doesn't matter whether it's waterfall or agile how do you respond to them you know it's a it's a matter of of you know having an uh, approach that you can get in and solve them when they occur and Chris, I, th I find what you're saying very interesting because it's it's not only kind of the dynamics of going from a test um, to live environment um, and things going wrong, but there's a real element of change in government and legislative changes coming at you very quickly. And has have you noticed a difference between being able to affect these changes in a waterfall environment for, versus an agile environment? Kathy, can you repeat that because there was a bit of audio problem at my end. So I was saying there's also um, quite amount of legislative changes that have to be implemented as well. And have you noticed a difference between your ability to implement legislative changes um, in an agile environment versus the waterfall environment? Well. Fortunately, what we're doing, we, we haven't had to do that in response to legislation. Um, we, we, for, we've, so we haven't had that particular issue, but uh, there is just so much change. Uh, there, there's organisational change going on within our department. And this hang out to a meeting about the next stage of Organisational change. Organisational change um, within the is being asked to provide a, a larger range of services, both back to the executive and to 
the other emergency services. Um, there is, yeah, th there is just so much change, and you just can't approach it in waterfall. You've got to be, you've got to have a pretty dynamic program. And you know, our business plan that we start the year on is gets changed dramatically through the year. So we're we're basically at the end of our financial year in June, and our business plan. What we started out 12 months ago is significantly different to what we're doing now, and that's agile. So you know, just agile in software is just reflecting what goes on in management, anyway. So uh, you know, there's there's uh, yeah, the, you've got to be able to respond to these challenges that management put upon you, and agile is the way to go. Well, thank you very much, Chris. We're just about out of time. Um, I'd, I'd like to just say I don't know if this is true in Australia, but here in America, and in particular in the state of Texas where I live, we've had many, many hundred million dollar failures of government uh, software production where the system simply didn't work at all. They were unable to turn it on. And one of the things that I like about Agile is that although you have lots of failure, and trouble and frustration with Agile, it tends to prevent catastrophic failures and turn it into manageable failures um, that you can deal with. Uh, having said that, I'd like to give you the last word and uh, um, perhaps you can just sum up what advice, although I know you put some in the case study that you've uh, published, what advice you would give to our listeners uh, who may be watching this uh, as a YouTube video after this show. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, start small, start on something that is non-critical, um, you know, build up the team, build up your skill set, build up your tools, uh, and then, you know, uh, it's a matter of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, you know, so start off, you know, don't be don't be afraid of trying agile as a new development techno technique. It is it it has big benefits and um, and I certainly you know while while it has been difficult in some cases, it's been really worth it. And I I I I do really encourage other people to to look at agile and how, how they can introduce it in their agencies. But to uh, uh, talk with me further, then link up with me on LinkedIn and uh, we can take it further. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for your time, Chris, and especially thank you for sharing your expertise and experience, which uh, hopefully will help some of us out there as we together try to struggle to make things better for the people of the world. Thank you. Chris, thank you very much.